I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. Yes, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. So use me as you please. Use me as of me. I surrender. I surrender whatever you ask of me. I surrender. I surrender. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, Lord, I'm yours. Yes, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. Lord, use me as you please. Use me as you please. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours, Lord, forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, yes, I'm yours. Sure, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours, forever, Lord, you, me, I, you, please, use me, I, you, please. I surrender whatever you ask of me. I surrender. I surrender whatever you ask of me. I surrender. I surrender. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. We get to create an audio Bible in the process. And we get to create an audio Bible. We get to study the Word of God together. And of course, we get to wish a lot of people happy birthday. We get to pray for people and all that. And if you have any other interesting thing that you think we can do on a chapter a day, we're very honored to have you and we're very much open to suggestions. So you can give us some really pretty suggestions that we can make a chapter a day more accommodating and very beautiful. Okay, so let's get on with a chapter a day. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your mighty hand of protection, provision. We thank you for guidance. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. Lord, we thank you for all the things you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do. We thank you for your word that you gave us today during service. We thank you for all those who had a, a special service today. And for those who are still to go to service, Lord, I pray that you're going to help them. So nothing is going to hinder them. They'll get to service safely and on time in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know that you always hear and answer us. You're always there for us, always looking out and making sure that we have the best of everything. Increase while I decrease, so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, and heard throughout this edition of a chapter a day. In Jesus' name, I said, name with prayer, thanksgiving. And all the things shall say a very big fat amen. Amen, people. Let's get right on to the birthday party. There's a birthday party before the Bible party. Okay, so if you're confused, birthday party is well. We wish a lot of people happy birthday, those who are in our birthday book, and then we get to pray for. Okay, 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 okay. Happy Sunday once again to every single person who is here. We're excited, we're glad to have you, and we're sorry for that little technical difficulty there. Technical itch. We are starting up with a birthday party, and like I said. They're going to, um, the birthday party is really about just wishing a lot of people happy birthday and praying for them on their birthday. And then the Bible party is where we, I read the Bible just on one go. I read the chapter for that day. That's great in the audio Bible. And then we can now stir it up to maybe verses and break it down to actually make it become a practical reality in our lives so that we don't see it like it's some old, old fashioned book kind of like just out there kind of book no we see it like what it truly is and then 
we can be able to live the life that Christ expects us to live. You get when it comes to um, leaving the word of God. And that's the Bible party there. We study the Bible together. We study the word of God together. And we make it as applicable as possible in our lives so that we can be able to enjoy the Christian life here on earth. So sometimes we can break it down verse by verse after reading. Sometimes we can just get a broad summary of what the entire chapter is talking about. Depending on how broad or simple or straightforward the chapter is, we get like that. So yeah, let's start with the birthday party. Mm -hmm. The first person is Mr. Reggie Bullini. I got to know him in Ghana and he was working at this radio station. I've forgotten the radio station's name. I can't remember what exactly we went there for. I think we had to do an internship or something and then we went to the radio station. I'm not sure exactly. But I know he was working at a media uh, a media outlet and that's where I got to meet him. And we just became, like we just connected. We just connected. We just clicked like that. Uh, we became good friends check this other we kind of um, swap contacts and we get to communicate with each other once in a while not as frequently as we we should but the little times the 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 few times that we get to talk to each other sometimes because of busy busy schedules and all that but the few times we get to talk to each other is beautiful i really like it because we encourage each other and we talk about really amazing stuff and of course he encourages me that that no standing to be my best to keep doing what I'm doing and he's very appreciative of the things I do thank you so much mr. Reggie Bole I hope I pronounce that name well <laughs> and then the next person is Mambi Riza Mambi Riza I got to know her on Facebook we had a mutual I think I connected to her with her on a mutual friends post or a mutual friends live or however but it was on Facebook I'm sure about it it was on Facebook and then when we got connected we exchanged contacts and we started connecting on WhatsApp. She has this clothing line. I don't know if it's unisex or it's only for girls. I'm not sure. I don't want to say that perfectly and definitely without being sure. But I think it's unisex. I think she sells for everybody and every size and every age. I think so. I think so. Well, she'll definitely put the link or her contact details in the comment section so that if you want to get anything that she does, you want to get her goods or services, you can actually get them. I know that she also distributes, she also sells some health products and stuff like that, healthy living kind of things, and I think vitamins as well. I'm not so sure, but. Whatever she does, she's going to put in the comment section and you guys can go patronize her. She's an amazing person. She's very pushful. She's very business oriented. She's entrepreneurial to the core. And she is one really lively person. There's never a dull moment when you're talking with Mam Riza B. Happy birthday to you, darling. God bless you. The next person is Mam Live and Killer. <clears throat> Mam Live and Killer got to know her through a mutual friend. And then got to know that she was a sister to one of my awesome friends. You know how the world can be very small? Small world, huh? Yeah. So um, she's one of those persons that I admire a lot. She, she has a way she carries herself around, which is really beautiful. I, I love her confidence. I love her, her, her composure and everything. It's really nice. When I, when I saw her for the first time, I really liked her, but I didn't know how I was going to talk to her. And then fortunately for me, my best friend knew her. So she went to talk to her and then we connected. That's how it happened. I was so, so happy. I was stupendously happy. And yes, she's an amazing person. She's very friendly, very welcoming. She's very jovial too. And, of course, there's never a dull moment with my life and killer. Happy birthday to you, beautiful. And then the next person is Mom Stella Toku. Mom Stella Toku, I got to know her when we were at, um, when we were working at Innovare. So, I was schooling and working at the same time. She was one of those persons as well that also helped me to fit in, to navigate when I started working. Because... I had to work in school at the same time because I had to take care of some things. I had no choice. And I was hoping that I would finish and stay there. You know how when you have your plans and then God scatters the plans. I was hoping that I would finish and stay in Ghana and remain in Ghana. But God didn't want me to stay in Ghana. So I had to move. 
and yes so i had a great time there she helped me a lot to to get to know my way around to get to do stuff you know and she's also very pretty she's very hard working too and she's very lovely very very welcoming thank you so much for being all these amazing people so once again i say a very happy birthday to mr reggie bully knee the next person is Mam B. Riser. The next person is Mam Live and Killer. And the last but not the least is Mam Stella Toku. Happy birthday to you all, these amazing people. And I wish you all the very best. So let's get to pray for the birthday people. And then we'll get ready for the Bible party. Our Bible party today is taken from the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 34. Which means we have just two more chapters to go. And we're done with the book of Chronicles. And then we're going to the book of... Kings, right? No, we are. Yeah, I think we're going to the Book of Kings. No, we're already done with the Book of Kings, Samuel. <laughs> Do I know my Bible word? First and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, Ezra, 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 guys, Ezra. <laughs> Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. <laughs> Joshua judges Ruth. Joshua judges Ruth. Did I not miss Esther? No, Esther is after Nehemiah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Joshua judges. First and Second Samuel. First and Second Kings. First and Second Chronicles. Yeah, I'm right. Ezra. <laughs> Guys, I have a song for the New Testament, so I don't forget it. But for the Old Testament, I've never had a song. I've never had anything. So I have to just say it like that in my head and then try to figure it out. Yeah, I got it right. I got it right. Let me check. Yeah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Yeah. Oh, I had to master that. I had to master that okay so let's get to pray for the birthday people and then we'll get right on so this is the two four six eight ten twelve fourteen so this is the 14th book of the old testament and the 14th book of the bible and of course we'll be getting done in the next two days and we'll be going to the 15th book which is the book of ezra i can't wait because my son's name is ezra Hans Ezra, he's a big boy now. He's making me proud in every single way. He went for his holiday classes and he did so well that they had to move him a class ahead. Yep. Because of the worst scenario that is happening in my country, especially in the town where they're leaving, um, it was like they were scared and so they had to make him stay one class back. Like they had to make him redo a class. I wasn't very happy but he proved himself like the gentleman that he is and the good student that he is and of course when they had this um, holiday classes to get ready to get admitted he was so good he did so good that they had to put him a class forward so now he's in his right class yep he's in his right class I'm so proud of him I'm so happy so, in two days' time, we'll be going to the book of Ezra. That's the book of my son. <laughs> Let's pray for the birthday people, guys. I could talk about that little one. Like, just make this life about him, but let's not do that. <laughs> Father, we thank you for adding a new year to the lives of all these amazing people who were born today. Lord, we thank you for giving them a new year. We pray, oh God, even as you open beautiful pages for their lives this day, Write awesome stories that will give them reasons to thank and glorify you and bless your holy name. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to cause them to to increase in wisdom and stature, gain in favor before God and before men. Lord, that you're going to cause them to grow in every aspect of their lives and they're going to grow amazingly to the glory of your name. Lord, I pray that you cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Open the windows of heaven and release the choices of your blessings upon their lives and let these blessings cause them to be a blessing in their generation and beyond. And it should also cause them it should encompass and run about so much so that no weapon formed the fashion against them shall prosper. 
Father, let these blessings, because of the overflowing, people who come in contact with them will literally rub off of the blessings from their lives. We thank you, Lord, because we know you can do much more than we ask or imagine. Lord, cause their part to keep shining brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Let them be a great example to the world. Let them be that grown let them be those people that will manifest to the nation that is waiting for the grown for the manifestation of the sons of god lord make them sons and daughters of god that they will truly manifest to these people to the glory of your name lord i pray oh god that you're going to cause them to stand out and not fit in everyone that you created had a unique purpose a unique problem to solve you on earth and in solving these problems we stand out we can't fit in because we were created to be unique so lord as they find their specialty what they are good at what you created them to do oh lord father make them to stand out and not just fit in that they are going to stand out to the glory of your name in the mighty name of jesus lord i pray that you divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress and be their best and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress lord i also pray that you're going to open their eyes to see those they're supposed to be destiny helpers to and let them connect to these people and help them and strategically position themselves to help them when the time is right and lord i also pray oh god that you're going to cause them you're going to cause their own destiny helpers to be strategically positioned all around their lives so that when the time comes they will also be able to receive help when they cry out for help in the mighty name of jesus lord i pray oh god that you perfect all that concerns them you give them a Psalms 126 state a state of continuous laughter singing rejoicing and dancing to the glory of your name that if you try to come they'll come back here next year same time on this show live giving testimonies of all the amazing things you've done for them for bringing them because this will be their best birthday yet Father, I pray that you're going to do great and marvelous things in their lives, oh God. Lord, you said that one will call on you. You answer and show us great and mighty things which we we'll never know. Let that be a practical reality in the lives of these your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, that as they call on you, you will show them or some things, things that their minds can even fathom because you say you do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Father, let that be a reality for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you because I know you always hear an answer. Lord, shut every door that is not of you and open every door that only you can open and no man can shut. And you say that an effectual and fervent door is open for us, but there are many adversaries. Lord, we decree and declare that you go ahead and destroy all these adversaries so that your people will come in and enjoy that which you have in store for them and collect all that you have behind those doors that you open for them. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you bless the works of their hands. Wherever the lady your hands on, let it be blessed. Whatever the lady your hands on, you bless it. And wherever they tread their feet upon, Lord, grant it to them as a possession in the mighty name of Jesus. We well, bless your holy name because we know you are faithful, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody will say a big, fat, Amen. And I will say, Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in the line. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings meet blessings in their lives. Favor meets favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with a the garment of praise, honor, and favor. Enlarge their coast lot and fill their bands with all good things. May the good Lord bless you all tremendously. Happy birthday, people, from the bottom of my heart to you. Mwah. Enjoy! It's Bible party time. Ready or not, here I come. Oh, my daddy's here. Welcome, daddy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming, daddy. I appreciate it. Can you actually come live so you can bless the people? <laughs> okay, so today we're doing First Chronicles chapter 34, and it has 33 verses. Second Chronicles chapter 34 and he has 33 verses. 
34, 33. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Just wanted to go and it would have been 34, 34. Well, that's okay. We can manage. So let's get to the Bible party. Are you ready? I was born ready. Let's go. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, let's go. Second Chronicles chapter 34. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of David his father, and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David his father, and in the twelfth year he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places, and the groves, and the carved images, and the molten images, and they break down the altars of Balim in his presence, and the images that were on high above them he cut down and the groves and the carved images and the molten images he break in pieces and made dust of them and strode it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed unto them and he burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars and cleansed judah and jerusalem and so did he in the cities of manasseh and Ephraim and Simeon and even unto Natal even unto Naphtali with their mathoks round about and when he had broken down the altars and the groves and had beaten the graven images into powder and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel he returned to Jerusalem now in the 18th year of his reign when he had purged the land and the house he sent Shaphan the son of Azaliah and Manasseh the governor of the city and Joar the son of Joaz the recorder to repair the house of the Lord his God and when they came to Hilkiah the high priest they delivered the money that was brought into the house of God which the Levites that kept the doors had gathered of the hand of Manasseh and Ephraim and of all the remnant of Israel and of all Judah and Benjamin and they returned to Jerusalem and they put it in the hand of the workmen that had the oversight of the house of the Lord and they gave it to the workmen that wrought in the house of the Lord to repair and amend the house even to the artificers and builders gave they it to buy hewn stones and timber for couplings and to floor the houses which the kings of Judah had destroyed and the men did the work faithfully and the overseers of them were Jahath and Obadiah the Levites of the sons of Merari and Zechariah and Meshulam of the sons of the Kohatites to set it forward and other of the Levites all that could skill of instrument of music also they were over the bearers of burden and were overseers of all that wrought the work in any manner of service and of the Levites there were scribes and officers and porters and when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of the lord hilkiah the priest found the book of the lore of the lord given by moses and hilkiah answered and said to shaphan the scribe i found the book of the lore in the house of the lord and hilkiah delivered the book to shaphan and Shaphan carried the book to the king, and brought the king word back again, saying, All that was committed to thy servant, to thy servants, they do it. And they gathered together the money that was found in the house of the Lord, and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers, and to the hand of the workmen. Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest had given me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the Lord, that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah, and Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Abdon, the son of Mekar, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asahiah, a servant of the king's, saying, 
Go, inquire of the Lord for me, and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord, to do after all that is written in this book. And Hilkiah, and they that the king had appointed, went to Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvath, the son of Hashra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they spake to her to that effect. And she answered them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell ye the man that sent you to me. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I'll bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof. Even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall ye say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, concerning the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest his words against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, and humblest thyself before me, and didst rend thy clothes, and weep before me, I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord. Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place, and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites and all the people, great and small. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. And The motorbikes, people. The motorbikes. Behold, I gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests, and the Levites, and all the people, great and small. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood in his place, and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord, and to keep his commandments, and his testimonies, and his statutes with all his heart, and with all his soul, to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. And he caused all that were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of the countries that pertained to the children of Israel, and made that and made all that were present in Israel to serve, even to serve the Lord their God. And all his days they departed not from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. This is the word of the Lord. In all the saints shall say a big fat. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, guys. Okay, so let's go. We're going to read this verse by verse now to get it right, right? Okay, so we're going to do verse by verse. Are you ready? Are you with me? Who's with me? If you're with me, just say, I'm with you, princess. Well, even if you're not with me, I'm with God, so I'm going to go on. <laughs> That's not to say I don't care if you're with me or not. I would love to have you with me. It's a beautiful thing to have people with you. 
I love when this thing is a dialogue, not a monologue. When I'm saying stuff and then you're also saying something. And then we're having this conversation together and we're being blessed together. I like that to happen. So if you have an opportunity to be able to talk, I, I wouldn't mind. I'll be very glad to have you. And so would still say it over and over again. Age is not a matter. Age is not... Um, Age doesn't matter. God can use you at any age at all. There were some people who started reigning when they were like 40 years old, when they were 30 years old. And there were some people who started um, 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 reigning as king when they were just about 6 years old. And now we're seeing an 8 year old. We saw a 7 year old. The lowest that we're seeing is a 6 year old. And we've now seen a 7 year old, 8 year old. And it just keeps going even to the oldest of them all. But the truth is, God used them. So don't feel so bad about yourself. If, you, if you're old, you can start now. You can make a difference in your generation right now. And of course, you should not also feel too bad. Like, oh, I'm too young. I can't do this. No, do not despise your youth. Do not let anybody despise your youth. That's what Apostle Paul was saying to Timothy when he was writing him a letter. If God wants to use you and your child, he can still use you. And you have to believe in the one who is backing you up. Don't bother about what people say don't bother about what people think be sure that god is backing you up and he's the one who sent you on the assignment and if it's god who sent you on the assignments like i said he will back you up he's not gonna leave you so yeah age is not an issue god can use anybody at any time and it's also something that I'm saying, we should not look down on some people because God can use even a child to correct you. God can use even a younger person to correct you. Because there's some people these days, especially in the Christendom, it's so sad. This thing is happening amongst Christians. It's so sad. You see someone who has been in church, they've stayed in church for so long that they feel that it's about longevity. It's not about longevity, darling. It's about a personal relationship with God. If you stayed in the church for so long, and of course, God, the power of God is not even walking through you, it's zero. It's zero, child of God. And some of us have become so familiar with God that we just do some, we just do some kinds of stuff. We don't even care. And then maybe God is using a young convert who just came to church and is very zealous. And God is using the person because the person is availing themselves. You start saying, what is she claiming? What is this one claiming? Who do they think they are? They are who God says they are. Ambassadors of Christ. They're going on with the word of God. They're preaching the word of God. Is that an issue? Should that be an issue? It's an issue to you because you become too complacent with God. You become too used to the same familiarity breeds content. That's true. When you become too familiar to peop with people. Oh my God. Tell me about being familiar. Sometimes it takes me a whole lot to actually have to differentiate my dad from my dad and the pastor. Oh, my dad is a pastor. So sometimes it's not easy. There is a possibility of us just taking taking his pastoral um office or pastoral authority for granted because he's our father believe me believe me i know what i'm talking about so you have to be careful because if we if we if we downplay his pastoral authority we're not going to get blessed by that authority because there's a blessing that comes to us because he's a pastor as much as there's a blessing that comes to us because he's our father so we don't have to mix the two because when we mix the two that familiarity will make us miss the blessings that come with him having the grace of a pastor upon his life which is very tricky so we have to be very careful and as much as that even if it's a young person listen god can use just about anybody to speak to you if god had used people and used people until he had to use an ass to speak to somebody then you should know that god can just about use anybody yeah so don't look at that person at all because it's a younger person. You can't listen from them. Which one? This one that I was wearing her diapers. This one that I was pampering her. This one that I was feeding her when she was born. No be so. No be for size. No be for age. God can use any and everybody. And please respect the graces. There are some older pastors that... There are some older leaders that don't want to respect the grace of God upon some younger leaders that God is using. And as much as you don't respect the grace, God is not a respecter of person. As much as you don't respect that person's grace, you will not receive the blessings that are attached to that person's grace. It is just normal. So it's up to you. It's your choice. 
whether you're going to be acting all high and mighty and missing out on things that God has in store for you through a particular minister or a particular servant of his because you think you're too, you're too full of yourself. When you become too full of yourself, there are some things that you're going to miss. You'll not be able to get those things. And so this guy, one good thing about him is that he cleared out every single thing that had any connection. He did not only just clear it out. You know, maybe you can clear it out and throw it away and people go and pick it. He burnt it to ashes and threw the ashes away. That was how serious he was. See, when you want to get off the world, get off the world. Don't be doing one leg in, one leg out. The Bible says that you're either hot or cold. If you are lukewarm, he will spew you out of his mouth. The truth is that when you're lukewarm, eh, you're in the devil's camp. And the devil makes a lot of Christians to stay on that part, on that lukewarm state. They're deceiving themselves that they're in Christ. Meanwhile, they're in the devil's camp. Sorry, darling. You're already in the devil's camp. There are no two ways. You can't serve God and mammon. It doesn't work. So when you want to cut off, cut off. Sister, when you want to cut off from that boy, cut off from that boy. When you don't want to say, when you don't want to be with him, don't be with him in any way at all. Guy, when you don't want to be with that girl, don't be with her in any way at all. Stop tempting temptation. Oh yeah. You know yourself. You know those things that you're doing. You've just been saved and brought out of pornography and you're still playing with some pictures or things in your phone. Child of God, you need to block those sites from your phone. You need to even abstain from the internet for a while. You need to delete all those pictures from your phone. You need to delete contacts of people that have those kinds of things that you guys used to have those kinds of conversations. You need to block those people if you have to for your mental sake, for your sanity sake. But no, we still want to play with a little bit of this, a little bit of that. That's what happened to the previous kings. Some of them, they deleted a couple of things. They took away a couple of things. And then soon enough, before they noticed, the things that they are not taking off started taking a toll on them. And boom, 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 they went back. That's how it is. See, when you leave the world, my dear sister, my dear brother, leave the world totally and complete you. I remember sometimes that my dad used to go and drop me off and I was going out with my friends, my Wally friends. I was going out with them and they would go to crazy places. That was because I was trying to please them. But I had to totally and completely cut off because it wasn't working for me. I'm telling you, living a dual life is the most difficult thing you can do. Just choose. Sometimes we find Christianity so difficult, so hard, because we're trying to live a dual life. If we're totally and completely living for God, it won't be complicated. It won't be difficult. Why is it difficult? Because when you're with your friends in the world, you want to live like a worldly person. And you're not. You've accepted Christ. The Spirit of God in you will not allow you to live the worldly life. So you're always on edge. You're always scared. You're always... Child of God, you can do better. You're better than that, right? You're better. You're better than that. Don't let that get to you. So, well, he took away everything. Burnt it, break, did everything. I mean, to ashes. And he burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. Oh, my God. And so did he in the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, Simeon, even of to Naphtali, and their mathoks round about. And when he had broken down the altars and groves and had beaten the graven images into powder and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. Cool. Now in the 18th year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the house, he sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, and Manasseh, and Maseah, the governor of the city, and Joar, the son of Joar, has the recorder to repair the house of the Lord. And we come again to this place. When it comes to repairing the house of the Lord, there are particular people that they will call. They will not just call everybody. So everybody's going to gather money and give to that person. So, child of God, be proud of what you do because when the time comes, it's going to be you, the expert, that they'll call. They ain't going to call for people who know a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. No, they want the best. So they're going to call one who is a master at their craft. 
what are you a master at what do you believe that god has created you to come and be to be a solution to here on earth they didn't build the altar every day every time every single moment but the one time that they needed to build the altar which was going to be a good deal and a good job they were calling the best of the people the workmen that did it, the workmen that are doing this, the one that hewn stones, the timber curtains and all that. They were getting back to those people. They were just not just going to get to any kind of person. They were getting to the right people. And they say all the men did the work faithfully and the overseers of them that were this, this and this. And um, other Levites, all that could skill of instruments of music. The God skilled people. The God skilled people. And this will tell you, child of God, don't destroy your business by being all sentimental and emotional. Business has nothing to do with emotions and sentiments. It has everything to do with wisdom. Wisdom is profitable to direct. So don't go employing people in your company who are not skilled enough because they are brethren in church. Mm -mm. See, I will tell you guys over and over again, if I have a company, I ain't going to invite you, I ain't going to employ you because you're in the same church with me, because you're, in, no, 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 no. I would employ you because you're qualified. The only upper hand you will get is if two people come to my company, the one is an unbeliever or maybe a believer, but I don't know you. And you are a believer and I know you. Your only upper hand is that you are qualified and I know you. If you're not qualified, oh my, oh boy, be sure. I'm going to take the other person. Oh yeah, it's business. We're looking for skill. Even when they were building the house of God, they went to the people who were hewers of timber. They went to the people who were hewers of stones. They didn't just choose anybody. There were lots of people in Israel who could work. I'm sure cheap labor was available. If they wanted cheap labor, they would have just done cheap labor. But no, when they wanted to build the house of God, they went to the people who were skilled in whatever they were doing. So child of God, up your game. If you know what you are, if you know who you are called to be, if you know what you are called to do, please do everything you can to up that skill. If you see an opportunity, maybe a training, maybe a, 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 um, a meeting, maybe a workshop that has something to do with who you are, my God, learn. Knowledge is never wasted, especially in the area where you are called to fulfill purpose. It's never wasted. You see, it's never, ever wasted. So these people they went ahead and did everything and they put money together, they put finances together and got it and gave it to these people and they were building the house. And while they were building the house, they found the book of the Lord. And this guy read it. See, knowledge is power. You would survive in this world with as much knowledge as you know and as much of that knowledge you put to practice because you can still read it and do nothing about it. Oh, yeah. He could have still just read that book and done nothing about it. But he decided to do something about it. And they said when he read it, he rent his clothes because he knew that they were in trouble. They were in some terrible mess. The generations before had put them in so, so much trouble. And the wrath of God was going to come upon them. And it was just not going to be funny. <clears throat> so they went out and asked God, he would have just said, oh, he's a king. So he could just sit there and ask God by himself. No, but he went through the right tracks. You know, this is still part of that thing of, um, it doesn't matter who the person is, whether the person is younger than you or the person is lower than you in authority. If God has given them something to do, honor their office. He honored the Levite's office. He honored these people's office. And when they brought the, 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 the book and came and read to him, he didn't say, oh, he's going to ask God. No, he sent them to go to the rightful channels to go and ask. And when they went, they got the right answers. It was not his job. Yes, he could go to God, but it was not his job. It was the job of the Levites and the priests and the um, prophets to ask God when they were desiring to get answers to some things. It was their, their position to do that. It was their position to burn offerings, to burn incense. But Saul, no, he said the people made him do it. Really? You're a king. Who is supposed to have much more authority? What are you talking about? Like, are the people ruling you or you're ruling the people? 
a leader who cannot lead well he wasn't really led and that's why they say you can lead right if you've not been led before most of us in this our generation everybody self-proclaimed prophet bishop pope assistant jesus and right reverend and wrong reverence all over the place everybody just has titles if you've gone on social media you have a kind of following you just feel like you're the Lord God Almighty or something. I don't know. It's so sad. So everybody now is seemingly an authority, so to speak. So you just come and be spewing any kind of thing here. And because the gullible um, um, generation, the microwave generation, we don't also go to study the Bible for ourselves. So we just fall for these things. So sad. It's very sad. But anyways, he did the right thing. He went to the right people. And they went and inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said, oh, yeah. The wrath of God is going to come upon them. They're going to fall. They're going to suffer for the consequences and everything. But then, you can escape it. Maybe your family is guilty. Maybe this one is guilty. That one is guilty. You can escape it because he had a good heart. Because he served God. Because he took away all the things that his father had done. He cleansed Israel and Jerusalem. He cleansed Judah. He cleansed all these places. God told him that. Eh, the wrath of God is going to come upon this nation. But he will not see it. So as long as... See, some people will enjoy for your sakes. For the things you do. See, if you cut that ugly pattern right now that is happening in your family, don't you think your children will enjoy? Don't you think your children's children's children will enjoy? Why do we think a lot of Americans enjoy some things even though they've just done their worst right now until it's getting so bad? Their forefathers had a good foundation for them. Why are a lot of Africans in trouble? Our forefathers had some ugly foundations for us. So we're fighting some battles of altars that we were not even a party to. But in the spirit, we were handed over to those um, 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 covenants and stuff. We're negotiated on. So if you now clear that out, it's going to work for your family. Look at this guy. Throughout his reign, people did not suffer the wrath of God or the punishment of God because he was there. Because God made a covenant with him and said, because you've loved me, because you've served me, because you've brought the people to serve me, to love me, to know me. I ain't going to punish them. I'm going to punish them now, but I would after you. Why? Because you're serving me. Can your serving God help a generation? Can you serve? Oh, yes, it can. Because you're serving God, there are some people around you that will just be naturally blessed. Because you're serving God, there are some people that will just be connected to you that will be naturally blessed. Why? Because of the overflowing of the blessings in your life. Child of God, serve God. It's a good thing to serve God. It pays to serve God. See how this entire nation of Jerusalem was going to enjoy for as long as this king was leaving. They were going to enjoy the goodness of God, the favor of God. Even though they owed a debt of punishment. I God, help me to serve you. I want to serve you from the bottom of my heart. I want to serve you so much so that my serving you is going to affect my generation positively. This is a man who so served God, so loved God, so much so that his entire nation, his entire rulership, people enjoyed the favor of God even though they had to be punished. It was like a reverse something. They deserve to be punished, but they will not be punished as long as this man is alive. Hey! God, let me be like that, Lord. Increase de desire, a burning desire for you, yearning for you to know you more, to serve you, so that my generation is going to be blessed because of me. So that as long as I'm alive, there are some things that cannot happen to the people who are connected to me. Lord, help me. Help me. I want to serve you like that. I want to really serve you like that, Lord. Oh my God. I desperately want to serve you like that. I don't know about you, but honestly, I really do. 
says because thine heart was thine heart was tender and thou didst humble thyself before God when thou heardest his words against this place and against the inhabitants thereof in humblest thyself before me and didst rend thy clothes and weep before me I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord. Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. Oh my God, because of one person, this whole nation is going to enjoy. He is not, as long as he's alive, oh God. Oh. As long as this man is alive, these people are not going to suffer. They're not going to be punished. They're not going to be sanctioned. So imagine some people actually enjoyed in that generation. People who lived in the generation and probably died when he died. They actually enjoyed because they were not going to experience the wrath even though it was still going to come. And I was just thinking in my mind, what if the next person also comes and serves God? So it means some generations are just going to keep enjoying the goodness of God until maybe someone... And I love the part that they said here. It means he saw the warning and he took it. There are some other kings that they warned them and warned them and warned them. They didn't listen before God this dealt with them. God is not a person who just come and just, he doesn't just want to destroy you. He wants the best for you. He wants you to, to, to not fall into the, into the trap. He wants you to get it right. He wants you to come out. He wants you to be safe. He doesn't want you to be punished. He doesn't want you to suffer. But it looks like some people have made up their minds that they want to suffer. So what can he do? He doesn't force people. You have to make the choice yourself. So he says, because you heard me. Because when this happens, you rent your clothes. Oh my God, I'm going to do those great things for you. And this king got at everybody and told them what was happening, what was going on, and made them serve God. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Who likes punishment? Who likes punishment? Who wouldn't? So everybody was like, oh my God. I'm sure some people could have been praying like, Lord, let him live long. Lord, let him live long so that there should be peace. And peace was what they had. They had peace all around. So child of God, your life could actually make a difference and it could make other people saved. It has been a beautiful edition today on the chapter today. I'm really grateful. Thank you all for being here today. And I pray that God is going to bless you really, really good. And you have a great week ahead. Go conquer your world in Jesus' name. We have our audio Bible on TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. We're looking forward to having, um, we're looking forward to having it on other social media platforms like TikTok and the other ones. But for now, we have it on these three platforms. So go on there. Get to listen to the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you hear the word of God, it boosts your faith. It builds your faith. So go grow your faith as you listen to the Bible. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we we'll upload a new video. I always get to say I love you so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Until tomorrow, it's going to be Second Chronicles chapter 35. Read ahead of time and come here. Let's have a swell time together. Okay, people? Father, we thank you for another great edition of a chapter today. We thank you for giving us a safe landing. We thank you for all the things you've taught us throughout this lesson today. Lord, I pray, oh God, that is going to be a part and parcel of our lives. And we're going to know that you can speak to us through anybody. And we should not minimize anybody. We should not look down on anybody. And of course, our lives should also be exemplary so much so that we can be a blessing in our entire generation. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've heard and answered. In Jesus' name we pray. With thanksgiving, and all the saints shall say a big Amen. See you again tomorrow. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed Monday. Have a blessed start of the week. Have a blessed, 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 blessed day. I love you so very much. Ciao, ciao. Mwah.